Dora, ra, 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 ra. There you go. Jojo. Jojo. God damn it, CJ, you're a perv. Oh, come on. Japan doesn't care about that. If you go crazy, CJ, I'm not going to be there for you. Oh, God, no. It's good. It's very good. But no. Although most of those are probably wrong. Yeah, fuck it. It's my destiny is fucking do this shit. It's destiny. Roberto, what the fuck? Hey. I need you to get on Skype right now. We're doing a podcast. You need to join. Oh, so it's one of those shows. Because the only one who can beat a main character is a main character. Alright, hello listeners. Welcome to the Pseudorandom Podcast. Uh, this is our third episode. I'm CJ, your host. Here with me today is our usual cast of people with uh, Dan, our Brazilian racist. Say hi, Bom Dan. Bom dia! <laughs> God damn. Olá, como estão? <laughs> Hello. A little, little too much there. But uh, right. <laughs> we also have Roberto, our short guy. Oh, Sue. And then uh, Clicker, the sick, because he's sick this week. Hello. Cough, cough. You'll probably hear him cough sometimes, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. Anyway. Just throw a Pokeball. <laughs> anyway, what this is, this is, um, yeah, this is a podcast about uh, anime and manga. And it kind of just works like a book club, where we all recommend anime and manga to each other, and we watch them, and then we talk about them. So, it's pretty simple. As usual, there is a heavy spoiler warning for just pretty much everything, because sometimes we forget to say stuff about, or say we're about to spoil something. The main thing that's going to be spoiled this week, though, because our main topic of the week is actually JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, episodes 1 through 9. So that will definitely be spoiled. We're going to be talking about that for probably about a half hour or so, or at least most of the podcast. All right, so um, the agenda this week, we have uh, three sections. We have um, obviously talking about our anime or manga of the week, which is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Then after that, we're going to be talking about uh, other anime or manga we've been watching or reading throughout the week. And then um, we also have our random topic of the day, which uh, this week we're doing... What is your favorite anime or manga that you've watched or read in 2014? And this can be either something new or it could be something old you just happened to watch last year. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go and get started. We'll get, uh, I believe Clicker is the one who suggested JoJo, so we'll get him to go ahead and do a quick description of it so you guys know what it's about and everything. Alright, thank you CJ. Well, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is, it all starts off with the JoJo family, which is this high-end archaeologist family, and JoJo's father runs into, has, has an incident, and he pretty much is in a life-or-death situation and gets this guy to help him out. In honor of him helping this guy out, this guy makes a deal with him where his son has to go live with the JoJo family. This then starts the adventure, where Jojo and this, pretty much his pseudo-brother, pretty much start bickering and fighting with each other, and eventually it escalates extremely high, and it's a really fun adventure, and it takes you through a lot. And yeah, bizarre it, nonetheless. Yeah, the, the, the name is very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it almost escalates as much as... Samurai Flamenco, but I don't know if anything can really match that. That's, yeah, that's up there. I, I wouldn't say it matches Samurai Flamenco because Samurai Flamenco, like. It, it starts off normal. It doesn't just be yeah. like fucking crazy shit. Jo- JoJo kind of, like, eases it into, eases its way into it. Samurai Flamenco was like, from gear one to max. Let's go. Yeah. It was... Just to make sure the listeners know exactly what we're talking about, we're watching the 2012 version of the show because. Uh, based on what I was looking, it looks like there was another one in 2000, in the year 2000, right? Or Yeah, yes. there's been there's been a lot of JoJo's, um, but they restarted JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and this one, in my opinion, is the best one. This is the one that they've okay. done the best with, so... This has been amazing so far. I do love the, the opening for it, too, where it's like, JoJo! <laughs> yeah, like, actually, yeah, I really it like gets, the opening it gets so, <laughs> so much better as you go through the series it just gets better and better each opening so you'll yeah. you'll like that um they so, haven't gotten to the best of the jojos have they roberto no, they'll start the they'll start next that's nice. all right that, okay. that makes me excited if the guys that we saw in this weren't even the best i'm i'm pretty excited now it's it gets I've really yet, good you have yet to see the best jojo 
You have yet to see the best JoJo. So another thing that's very apparent in the JoJo series is it's all about kind of destiny and fate. And how each JoJo has their own fate they have to look towards and stuff like that. So it's an interesting thing throughout the series. And I'm interested to see what the people who haven't seen it, which is Dan and CJ, what they think is going to happen. So you guys pointed out how it escalates a lot, and it does escalate, but if you think about it, it already starts pretty big. Because in the first episode, the dudes are 12 years old. They, I think they mentioned at one point that they were 12. And at 12 years old, they're already fucking, like, doing, like, boxing lessons and just punching each other's face all the time, and one of the dudes <laughs> kills the other dude's dog. I mean, oh, yeah, that it gets, was fucked it's, up, man. it's pretty intense and fucked up from the beginning. And that actually surprised me a lot because at first I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be this little, like, sibling rivalry or whatever. But it was already pretty intense. And then, uh, in the next episode, it goes, like, they skip a few years. I think they're, they're 18 or something. And, and they're the fucking dude, as big as, like, fucking yeah. <laughs> Armstrong from yes. Full Metal Alchemist. Just like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> the dudes become giant, like... I, I do want to say something, with, though, right. that's, like, amazing that about the first episode there, because um, I, I watched most of it, actually, today, because I had other stuff going on where I couldn't get to it yet. But, um, yeah, like, I, I, I actually started watching... The first episode, like a day or two ago, and I got most of it done, but I fell asleep apparently. And I was actually talking to a coworker about it and everything at work today. And my predictions for just like the first half of the show, like what the rest of it would be, were just fucking way off. Like <laughs> I was just like, "This is before you like, because because what what the fucking asshole dude Dio ended up doing was like literally burning uh, JoJo's dog alive in a furnace and shit. Like it was fucked up." But this is before that happened. I was like, oh, I think something's going to happen where it's going to be, like, typical stuff where they're going to, like, fighting. Something's going to happen. They're going to become, like, the best of friends or some shit. Right, right. Oh, God. I was, I was actually wrong. expecting the same thing. Especially because all the posters that I had seen for the show or just everything related to JoJo in general. I always remembered seeing, like, a blue-haired guy and a yellow-haired guy in the same, like, image. Uh, and not necessarily, maybe it could have been even other JoJo's and stuff, but I had this association that at one point they would become friends and, and fight together for, to defeat a greater evil or something. And absolutely not. I mean, the yeah. Dio Brando is fucking probably the worst. I don't want to say the, the worst villain, but probably the one that I hate the most. Well, like, he's just a straight up sociopath. Like he's, yeah. he's fucked and like he, he doesn't really, I mean, well, what's the best way to put this? I mean, I'm sure he understands like a little bit of emotion and everything, but it's like he just, he has just that disconnect that's so common with like sociopaths. It's just like, well, this dude kind of made me feel bad. I'm going to burn his dog now alive. It's like, right. where was your trade of thought to get there? What the <laughs> fuck? How was that okay? And I actually like the way the characters are, you know, like, although they're sort of simplistic because they have very clear and simple motivations for the most part, they are so exaggerated, you know, like, so Jojo is this extreme gentleman and he, oh, yes. even, even when he should be mad at someone, he's kind of like, oh, maybe I shouldn't or like he gives a full, like, he tends to give a full speech before hurting somebody, you know, like kind of explaining why like he should be doing that or something or kind of almost being sorry for doing it. And then Dio was fucking like the worst person ever. Like, I, I don't think I've ever hated a guy as much as him. It almost feels like his point there is just to be hated for the most part. Like, See, but that's what makes Dio such a good villain is yeah, sure. he's supposed to be hated and you hate right. his guts. And no, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it in a, good, in a good sense. Like, he actually kind of reminds me of Joffrey from Game of Thrones. I don't know if you guys watched that. But I don't want to derail the anime podcast into something that has nothing to do with anime. <laughs> but yeah, just in the sense that everybody fucking hates him because yeah. he's just so evil. Well, I mean, yeah, if you do actually a really good villain, they don't really... I mean, yeah, doing, like, just the, the straight-up fucked-up shit is, like, pretty bad and all that. But it, it goes into, like, um... How a lot of people are talking about with the the main villain of Far Cry 3, if you guys are familiar with him. And even if you're not, like, the thing that made him such a good villain was just, like... The same thing with, um... What the fuck's his name? Who's who's the asshole in Borderlands 2? Like, the main evil guy. Uh, you're talking about Jack. Yes, Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack. Both of them are just, like... Just because of the shit they say and how they treat you, you're just like... 
I want to murder this motherfucker. Like it, it just they they make you just like feel so much emotions towards right. him and everything. Like that's what makes such a good villain. And I, I feel that fucking Dio like embodies that really well. Like, and he fucking wouldn't die. Like there were so yeah. many moments where I was like, I, okay, I guess he'll be dead now. But no, like he just came back afterwards. Yeah, I mean he uh, was a vampire after all. Yeah. I, I was I, I admit I got a little bit afraid whenever that first happened and you first see like the first vampire guy and everything. I was like, oh god, what's this turning into? And then he ended up still being just a super badass villain vampire and shit. And I was like, okay, it fits him pretty well actually with the way he acts and everything. And ended up right. working out very well. I just was not expecting that at all. Like, not at all. I'm enjoying the show for the most part, though. It's it's really like. To me, like, kind of like a typical shonen where, like, most of the tropes are there, you know, like the big strong guy fighting a villain. He, like, the Well, they're yells. all big strong guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yells the attacks all the time. Tortoise Blue Overdrive! Yeah. I don't know, but there are some interesting things about it that, that made me uh, very interested on it as well, especially with what happened on episode 9. I think we can get to that a little later. Yeah. That, that, that was mostly the moment where I was like, oh, okay. Shit's gonna yeah. get it very interesting now. Yeah. Um, and also, something that I was very curious about, and I'm not sure if Roberta would have an answer to that, but at some points, they actually went into, like, a historic explanation moment, where they're like, oh, in London, in 18, 1863, or whatever, Queen Elizabeth did this, this, and that, with... like, And they were talking about, especially the one that marked me the most, was when they were talking about the two knights that were revived as zombies by Dio. And they, they took, I think, like, ten minutes just explaining, like, their whole story. And I actually, I was actually left there wondering if, if there was any real history behind it. And I was actually curious if anybody knows if there's any sort of real history this show is, at least partially, of course, based on. Yeah, I have no idea. I am terrible with history. Right off the bat, I don't know. But I know that the show does a lot of references to Western music classic hmm. western music and hmm. so if you haven't noticed a lot of the characters are named after bands from the 80s yeah. and 70s like Dyer and Straits and Tom Petty and Dio Speedwagon Dio and Speedwagon Mario Speedwagon huh. yeah I, I, I noticed that it was pretty that. great <laughs> it gets also, better like it's a continuing trend oh yeah. by the way like Speedwagon I fucking loved him as a character he was yes. great he's he was useless so though like he does nothing but he's not a bitch, though, is, like, the best part. He still is like, fuck it, I'm gonna try anyway, let's fucking do this shit. Even right. though he's a bitch, he's he's not. Like, he's just weak. He's not a bitch. There we go. That's right, right. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, Another he'll stand thing, by JoJo's side. Yeah. Another thing I loved was fucking, like, JoJo, like, it, when it, in the first episode... Well, there are two things. I'll get to the other one in a second. But, uh, like, the thing I loved about him was, even though, yeah, he started out, like... It almost seemed like he was gonna be that bitch character, and he's gonna be like that the whole thing. And then he was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna do this shit anyway. And right. <laughs> he ends up turning into, like, a pretty big badass, and it was great. Which kind of goes into another thing, like, whenever he was still really weak in the first episode, one of my favorite things that happens whenever he, he saves the, the girl he ends up marrying later, um, it was so good because <laughs> he actually ended up, like, getting mad at her when he thanked her, or when she thanked him, and, um... It's ended up saying he was just trying to be a gentleman and going into a fight that you know you lose and all that anyway. Even though at that point he's being a complete asshole and not a gentleman yelling at her about that. Right, right. Like I, I thought the irony in that was amazing. Yeah, th that's actually a good point. Oh, it was so good. And I just love that let, that's like, his thing is just like, fuck, I'm gonna be a gentleman this entire time. Saving people, fucking just everything. Like, keeping this dude from dying and shit. Like, And becoming great. probably the strongest gentleman on earth. <laughs> Yeah. And even when he's already like fucking Hulk, he he starts learning magic from what was the name of the guy again? The one Zeppli. Will A. Zeppeli. Yes. Zeppeli. Yeah. Zeppeli. Yeah, Named another, after another Led reference Zeppelin. there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then he becomes even more badass. Yeah. Like it it took me a little bit to really like because at first when the, the, the that stuff started showing up the I think it's Hamon is what it's called. Yep. Or whatever they're calling it, yeah. And um, when that first showed up, I was like, oh, God, it's turning into, like, fucking some magical guy bullshit that ended up being pretty awesome. And I can definitely tell why 
everybody who's talked about this has had two main words like come up when they're talking about it. The first one is manly, usually manly as fuck or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. And the other one is fabulous because everybody in the show, all the guys are fucking fabulous as shit. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wait till the second arc. It's very over the yeah. top as well, at least yeah. so far. Oh, oh entirely. Yeah. yeah. Like as far as like just the the personality and like the eccentricness and everything, fucking um, Baron Zeppeli has been my favorite so far. Like he was just fucking amazing in that aspect. I mean, just like fucking what he wore in that hat and shit, and he was still a badass. Right. Like, oh, it was great. It was fucking cutting half, and it was still alive. <laughs> yeah. Like, not even just cutting half. All his fucking arms was cut off and shit too. Yeah. And he go- went in there knowing that he was just gonna get fucking get-, get killed, and he was just like, yeah, fuck it, it's my destiny, let's fucking do this shit, I'm gonna save right. this dude. Like, that that dude was pretty badass. What did you guys so- think of the art style of the show? Because that was something that kind of caught my attention for for a while, because I, I actually think it's very unique as well, like, very bright colors, and they, they actually change, like, they keep doing, like, this lighting effects, changing the colors of the characters, so a lot of times the... Like a character's face, like the the screen would be frozen at a character's face, and everything would turn red or something. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was a unique art style. Oh yeah, yeah it's great. I've never seen anything like it. And the first time they they completely swapped palettes, I thought something wrong was with my TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I love both the the palette swapping as well as just having some things come through that are usually just in anime and all that, or not anime manga. Where it like has all the the words on the screen like yes, sprawled out exactly. and everything and all that like it was just great because it was just like it, it added emphasis and it because I uh, I'm not sure if everybody's like this whenever I personally read manga and everything it ends up pretty much being an anime to me because it all ends up being animated in my head and all that and that's pretty much exactly yeah, what it looks like like it almost reminded me more of comic books than than manga actually to me because there was like just the the over the top nature of the scenes with the the palette swaps and just like the bright colors. A lot of times, I almost felt like I was seeing like some sort of Marvel superhero or something. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe a little bit with some of it. I think Roberta was about to bring something up when was, when I started talking. Oh yeah. yeah. So one cool thing I like about this show is that they kind of treat vampires and their kind of origin where they're weak to the sun instead of whatever other bullshit they can make up with. Right. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm glad they kind of stuck with that. Yeah, they they committed to it, and that was about it. Mm-hmm. Well, they do have some other strange powers, but ultimately, they're still weak to the sun, and they need to feed off humans. Oh, the way they feed, like, the way they ended up having that come through is just so, like, awesome and badass. Like, I don't know, just because, um, for people who haven't seen it, like, whenever they, like, feed on people, at least some of them, anyway, some of the zombies and everything just straight up eat people, but... Other ways they do it, they literally just, like, take their hand, just jab it into somebody, like, fingers into your neck a couple inches, and just suck all the life and blood out of you, and it's just, like, it's, it's one of the more gruesome ways I've seen it done, but it, I don't know, it's, it just looks fucking cool as shit, like, it just works, (laughs) I don't know why. I think the first time I saw it being done, I actually thought, like, he would kill the guy. But he didn't. He was just... And I don't remember exactly which one it was. But just, like, putting the fingers... Like, the fingers went straight to the neck. It's like, oh, oh shit, yeah. that guy's dead. But no. Oh, the fucking first dude he killed. Like, that surprised the hell out of me. He literally just, like, smacked him in the back of the head and just chopped the top half of his head off. It's just like... Right, and this show is well. very violent from time to time as well. They just kill so many people. Like, I don't know. It's Some of them in very gruesome ways. <laughs> yeah. And then they don't... As... as is evident through some of the the later episodes of this arc. They don't really care who they kill off half the time, it seems. Like, and pretty much nobody's safe. Yep. Because, yeah. So I, should, I should we go there now? Yeah, should sure, talk why about not? What happened? All right, so by the end of episode nine, Jojo is dead. I yes. was sad. I was very sad, actually. I liked him. I the first totally time... see that coming. The first time I saw this series... I went straight to Roberto and was like, Roberto, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, what the fuck, Roberto? And he was like, hold on, hold on, just keep watching. And I was like, all right, Roberto. And I'm totally glad I kept watching. You guys will, if you thought the last arc was good, the next arc is going to be spectacular. It's going to blow your socks off. Um, Cool. 
But yeah, yeah it was blow something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, something you guys need to understand is that JoJo is more than just a nickname. It's actually a title for people in the Joestar family. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking whenever he died. I was like, that seems like something that's just going to be essentially passed on through everybody, and like the next JoJo is going to be the badass and everything. And it did. I don't know. I guess it kind of makes a lot more sense with the name as well, with JoJo's bizarre adventure, because it's not just like a person. It's about like or not a single person anyway, like the Jonathan Joestar. It seems like it's just going to be just this adventure of like the family and this world and everything and. Right. I don't know. It, and I'm I'm pretty excited. I'm usually not excited at all about like anime or manga that are mostly focused on like action and stuff. Like this has been one of the few I'm just like, fuck yeah, I want to watch more. And the only reason I haven't watched more is because I finished the ninth episode about how long have we been recording? About twenty minutes, probably about thirty minutes ago. Then. Yeah, I actually so. finished today as well, a few hours before we started this, but. I was actually a little down with the show. I mean, it's good. I was having fun, but at the same time, I couldn't really see where it was going or ultimately what was the plot that it would pursue. And as I said, like, to me, like, it was feeling like, I don't know, it was kind of feeling like an usual shonen for the most part with very cool elements, like with very cool and unique things, but just for my taste on anime, just not enough that was grabbing me. But the moment I watched the ninth episode and that I got, oh shit, all right, he died. She is running away. With and she's pregnant of him, and she's carrying another baby, which means in the next generation there might be another like sibling rivalry or whatever, and just like creating like weird theories in my head, although most of those are probably wrong. That actually like everything finally connected to me, and I suddenly got really excited to see what's coming next. Well, the the main thing that actually got me really excited to see what's coming next is like I, I used to watch some of the older stuff and everything, like Dragon Ball Z and everything. And the reason I end up falling out of shows like that and just some of the some of the stuff I've seen from like the other popular series, like I've seen a couple instances with like Naruto and stuff like that where it's just like So you've been talking to this dude for an entire episode and you fight for two minutes and then you do it again next episode? No, this one has actually how, how about, more fighting. Yeah. They do they do ten ten minutes of build up on these two characters and then they fight and they both die and it's done. They're gone. <laughs> like you you don't see them again. Like, there's no bullshit in this, and it's great. And it's just like, well, that's done. Off to the next thing. Oh, let's fight this guy. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> like, right. So much better. Like, I don't know. It, it, it reminds me of a way in um, kind of how the fights ended up happening and stuff like that in Kill a Kill, where it, it definitely felt like it had the escalation that keeps happening in that, with, like, each fight is like, well, I'm more powerful, learn a new thing. More powerful, learn a new thing. Every fight. And... There's no bullshit and filler in between all of it. Like, it just keeps going, and it's great. Right. Then it's it's not quite as over-the-top and ridiculous as Kill la Kill, but it's it comes close sometimes. It's pretty good. Yeah, I never watched Kill la Kill. Oh, you should. It's great. Yeah. Ro- Roberto has recommended it to me a few times. Maybe I'm I'll sure get to it eventually. I'm sure everybody has. Yeah, some, of my, some of the people I know that don't even watch anime fucking loved Kill la Kill. It's a really good show, or anime. Like, every time I think about it, I just keep thinking, don't lose your way. It's great. Yeah. Anyway. So, one thing uh, I really enjoyed about the ending of this entire arc was how JoJo won. It wasn't just he won via his, like, super strength. He actually used his brain to win. As he stuck the sword, warmed up the sword, and countered Dio's ice bullshit. That's a good point of the show as well. Jojo isn't just a fucking monster with, like, huge muscles and stuff, but he's actually pretty smart as well. And I got that from the beginning when he... I, I don't remember which episode was that exactly. I think it might, it might have been the second or third one. When he figures out that Dio is trying to kill his dad. So he goes after the medicine, he gets the doctors to take care of his father and tells his father that he should only trust the doctors. And then when he when he comes back and Dio comes back as well, like fucking Scotland Yard is already in the building, which means he actually like he actually planned everything perfectly so that they would capture Dio and and that he would succeed, that he would beat him at that point. The only thing that he didn't expect was the whole uh, mask thing and Dio becoming a vampire and killing his dad and everything. Yeah, yeah. but except for that, like yeah, well, he was actually pretty smart at that point. 
Oh, and yeah. I think that was the point where I was like, oh, okay, this guy is, is an intelligent main character. Which we don't see that often. Yeah. Another thing I loved about, actually, with that scene... Or actually, that episode. There was, like, a scene before it and everything as well where... Like, the the super awesome thing where he actually ended up meeting uh, Speedwagon was right. he, he was jumped by these guys in this alley, like, this gang and stuff. And he, he was forced to fight them because otherwise they were going to try to kill him and stuff. And he did it... He... he he showed his real gentleness at that point and everything. It was great because he literally took all these hits and had like fucking like shit stabbing him and like cutting his hand on by grabbing somebody's like knife when they're trying to stab him by the blade and shit and doing all this. And like, it, it looked like he kicked their ass at first, but then you look back and like, he ends up mentioned like a uh, speed wagon mentions it. Cause he's, he's the one who like, he throws his fucking blade hat at him and gets it stuck in Jodo's arm. He's just like, that guy didn't, hurt us or anything he kind of just fought us off and didn't hurt us like and jojo was all like oh yeah i'm sure you must have a family and i don't want them to get like upset or anything over it right. it's just like what a wow <laughs> yeah that's you you can't be much more gentlemanly than that having somebody's <laughs> blade hat stuck in your arm and pseudo apologizing to them for knocking him down <laughs> yeah that's like, what really? i really liked about him as a character as well like no matter what happens he never loses that that side of him yeah, he always tries to protect people, even if they're fucking trying to kill him. Right. Like, it's ridiculous. Ugh. I mean, even so to good. some point, you probably saw Dio as a brother. Well, yeah. even at the end, like, you see him holding right. Dio's head and everything, and not, like, trying to brutally kill him and stuff. I mean, he, he, he kind of did a little bit, but it was more to get rid of the, the curse part of him and everything with the vampire, and that's the main reason he wanted to, wanted to actually kill him and everything, is to get rid of that. And, yeah, he he was never, like, super brutal and everything, I guess, is kind of a way to put it. It's a bad way to put it, but whatever. No, I get what you mean. I actually felt, uh, felt it that way as well, because although Dio was a fucking, like, evil bastard, they lived together for seven years. So, there was something in there. And at the first, at the first part, when it seems like he killed him, I think he, he cries a little bit. And then there was this other part where... Dio is just a floating head, and he ends up stabbing him, of course, to protect, like, his own family and stuff, but he ultimately, like, holding his head in his arms as if he was, like, actually, in a way, happy that they were, they were like, dying together and that everything had been solved or whatever, but not, he, like, he never actually shows, he, he wasn't really showing rage at that point. Yeah, I don't really think he ever, ever actually shows too much rage or anything. I mean, there is a little bit when his dad dies and stuff like that from Dio, but especially once he meets um, uh, Baron Zeppeli and everything, once he teaches him how to calm himself and always rem like keep his state of mind there and everything, it never really happens. Even whenever he's fighting Dio and it's like, I'm going to kill you because I'm mad, he's still super calm about it. It's like, okay. Yeah. Well, part of that is how his powers work. He yeah. has to be able to breathe, so if he's not calm, he can't breathe properly. Right. I like to think it's still a little bit him being just a oh, no, no. super I badass agree. gentleman as well. Cause, it definitely yeah. fits his character. Oh, yeah. Like, seeing him reminded me of a fucking game name that I've seen recently called Max Gentleman. I was like, yeah, he's he's pretty much Max Gentleman. He, you can't go much more than that. <laughs> I think we should all strive to be a gentleman like that. Indubitably. And as ripped as that, because, you know, it'd be pretty badass. It'd probably be inconvenient, though. Because yeah. his fucking shoulder muscles were bigger than his head. <laughs> yep. Like. I don't think he could go through most, like, regular-sized doors. <laughs> no, I imagine not. I was just waiting for the moment, though, after I saw how big he was and everything, for him to do, like, a full fucking Armstrong and just, like, just flex till his, like, clothes explode. <laughs> I was just waiting for that moment. I was hoping for it. Oh, oh God, I was hoping for it. Just wait till the next arc. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will enjoy the next arc. We, oh I, I will God. keep on saying that, but the next arc is really good. Oh, yeah, God, Battle he... Tendency is Held is one of the better ones. Possibly Dude, the best, I don't know. You made me just, like, peek the fuck out of my mic there. Dan's gonna have to turn that down in editing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Anyways. Yeah. It's a good show. I really like it. It's good. It does a lot of things right. Yeah. 
Yeah. It does a lot of things I didn't expect it to do right, which is why I've been enjoying the fuck right. out of it. It's good, it's unique, and I'm very excited to see where it's going next. Oh, yes. Like I said, if I didn't just finish it right before we started recording, I would have kept watching more. Like, holy shit, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> not at all what I expected. Because like I said, I, I usually am not at all for like any like heavy fighting stuff or anything. It's just not my not my style, really. It's like, eh, I'm not really that interested. If it's mixed in there a little bit important for the plot, then it's good. Or if they just do it fucking awesomely and cut all the bullshit filler like this. Oh, it's so good. Anyway. I mean, this show was definitely heavily inspired by Fist of the North Star. Which yeah. is way oh, more over the one. top yeah. than this show. <laughs> and you have to know you have to imagine that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure also helped set a lot of the how current Shonen is. Because oh, yeah. this is an old series if you haven't realized that already. Oh yeah, I've been talking to somebody, it's like from The late eighties. Like, yeah, I was about to say, I don't even think it's from the 90s, it's from the 80s. Like, the, yeah, mm -hmm. the reason Long why time. a lot of stuff is named after 80s bands is because it came from the 80s. Well, mostly the author's personal tastes. That's true, but he started the series in the 80s, and obviously... They didn't have his bad copyright laws and everything oh. then? <laughs> oh, come on, Japan doesn't care about that. <laughs> yeah. Which is why that series has had trouble coming out in the West. <laughs> right. So it's essentially the Earthbound of anime. Yeah, because spoilers, there is a character named ACDC. Nice. <laughs> that's nice. awesome. Dude, oh, that's fuck great. you, Roberto. You shouldn't have spoiled that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, so it's about time to move on. Anybody got any final comments or shit about this anime? Just nope. going back to what Dan was saying, how he didn't quite understand where the story was going, but really it's what Clecker said, it's destiny. It's the constant running into these vampires of the stone mask. How does each subsequent generation deal with their coming? Right, I was just afraid right. that the whole thing would just be like, like that character fighting a bunch of dudes forever, you know, like, and that it would just be the same thing no. for the whole 26 episodes, but I already noticed that it's not what is going to happen, so... There oh, will yeah, be that's... recurring characters here and there. No, that's uh, fine. I actually want to see that. And by reoccurring, he means they'll reoccur, but maybe in a different body, almost kind of oh, in a okay. certain sense. It, it right. you, you'll see what I'm talking about in the next series, nice or the next arc. Yeah, one thing I was actually really hoping for was um, and I lost it. Shit. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Never All mind. Right. I'll remember it. Moving on. Another right. thing. Oh, one last thing though. Still, fucking love that intro. Just like Jojo, Jojo. <laughs> it's like yes, so pumped. Yeah, I love Let's the point close to the end of the the opening where it just goes like really fast and it just shows like a bunch of images in like ten seconds or something. And it ends with Jojo, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> all of those are from the manga, actually. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, like I don't know, it just made me pumped for every episode. It was great. What about the soundtrack, CJ? Oh, it's pretty great. Yeah, there's plenty of dubstep in it. I've, is... I've I've been enjoying it. Which is odd for anime, usually. They don't really have a lot of dubstep. I think that's a new thing they're doing. Well, I mean, if they make it fit well, like with this, it's it's good. Like, it, it fit whenever they had it in there and everything to the point where I didn't notice it most of the time. Like, that's when you know you have an amazing soundtrack. When you don't notice it, it just, it's there and it's part of it. Like, it's it's meant to right. be there. Dude, you just All made right. me think of a movie I watched recently where I absolutely hated the soundtrack, but... Whatever, I'm not going to do any of the what, what movie was that? <laughs> oh, it was actually on. Birdman. Like, a lot of people have been talking about this movie, and I think it's, it's nominated for, like, a bunch of Oscars and stuff. But the whole, like... And I, I bet there are a lot of people out there that like this, but the whole soundtrack of this movie was just this drum beat. that was pretty much, like, the same beat all the time throughout the whole thing. And it just annoyed the hell out of me. Like, I couldn't enjoy the movie because of that. But yeah. whatever. Not anime-related. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, let's go into the, uh, I guess the next section here. Let's talk about what anime and manga everybody's been watching and or reading this week. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Like, pretty much I didn't really do much more than JoJo's. I've just, uh, kept up with some manga that I've been regularly reading. Like, um, got caught up on Fuka because I haven't read that in a couple weeks or whatever. And got very angry one day about that. Which I don't, have any of you, uh, read that yet? Not yet. I, I nope. <laughs> ah. 
Well, they're... Uh, never mind. I'll talk about it later then. No, you can get but, into uh, it. It's fine. Well, it's spoilers and shit. I don't want to ruin it for you guys, because I know you guys are going to watch it or read it at one point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, another thing is I've been catching up on Domestic Na Kanojo as well, which has been pretty good so far. Like... Actually, I don't really know where it's going to go, because it's a, it ends up being like a love triangle, or it's actually more, it's more than a triangle that. at this point. It's like a fucking hexagon or some <laughs> shit now. But um, it's been getting good, yet, I don't know, a couple, it, it gets slow a little bit, but there are a couple times where it actually pops up and, and comes back up. Like, the, the last one I read actually had a pretty big cliffhanger on it and everything, which I think you've been watching it, right, Roberto? Yeah, yeah, it's or been reading really good. it. But, um... Like, if you, did you read the last one where it was, uh... They're at the camp? Yeah, at the camp and everything, where they're, they're just like, well, he's he's divorced now. It's like, what? Whoa. Oh, God, everything's gonna go wrong now. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious as to see if the main character will finally accept their relationship in that way. I mean, I hope so. It, it seems like that's where it should go at this point, because, I mean... Or at least for her, anyway, because he, he, it seems like he's not really going to pursue her that much anymore. So I'm hoping he'll kind of just accept that, because it, it'd be okay for them to like date and everything at that point. Well, I, still, I can still see him overprotective of her, because if, if he did that to his loving wife, what's that stopping him from doing it to her? Yeah, that, that's pretty true as well. Because for, for you guys who don't know, it's uh, like this, the main character gets these two people broken up because she was having an affair with a guy where he was married to another woman and all that so right yeah so this happens now and it's just like oh god what's gonna happen now <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good yeah it's not that far along if you guys want to catch up yeah. with it how many chapters 25 right now yeah, that's, that's you can knock it out long. in a day yeah they're short yeah they're like i think they're like 20 or 30 pages a piece so you can knock it out in a few hours but and don't worry, Clecker, there's not too many sex scenes or anything. There's like <laughs> one or two. It's see, actually see, pretty like light on the issue. There's, there's like one right off the bat. One. I'll try to take a look. But it, it just establishes part of a plot line, though. Fine. Like, it's, it's just Fine. important for the plot. Because, I mean, uh, it's the first episode, or first chapter. I could probably tell you about that. Because it's like this guy has a random ass girl come up to him pretty much and just be like, hey, I want to have sex. And he's like, 10 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. And then they do, and he's, she's kind of still sad, cause she was doing that to try to, like, I don't know, try to fit in, I guess, and figure out, because all the other girls were talking about how they'd had sex everything already, and making fun of her, because she hadn't, or something, I don't quite remember. But, um, she was like, yeah, I don't really feel any different or anything now, and doesn't talk to him again until later you find out that his dad is marrying her mom, and they're Kind of brother or sister now, and it's weird. Yep. Oh, so it's one of those shows. <laughs> no, well, no, it doesn't go into shit like that, Dan. Get your mind okay. out of that. Okay. Sorry to disappoint you, but oh yeah. man, I'm I'm sad now. Well, they weren't related <laughs> when they did it, and no. then they're suddenly yeah, I know, related. I know, I'm I'm kidding. Well, they're they're still technically not related. It's still yeah. just like a step brother step sister thing. Mm-hmm. So it's well, it's do they still... call themselves Onicha and Onisan? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That that would make it weird, yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it it doesn't get to the creepy vibe or anything. And it's like I said, it's still even if they did continue to do shit, it's still like it's it's frowned upon, but it's not really that bad. Because I mean, I don't know, they're not really related, right. which is kind of funny because that's like the whole point of Kiss Exis and their parents pushing them to get together and all that. Right. <laughs> it's yes. still fucking weird. Yeah, I I don't know what to is think. Ridiculous, like the way those parents act. I, I can't see parents actually acting like that, but it's it's yeah. actually a pretty hilarious show, to be honest. Like, I had fun watching that. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I've mostly just, like, read it and everything what I have. Like, I, I don't know, though. It's It gets too weird sometimes. Right. It well, really the does. The annoying part of Giz says to me is not even the, like, the sister's part as much as it is just some weird fan service that they put from time yeah. to time. Like the Speaking of which, uh, Clegger, you should you should read Kizak Sis. You'll love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one is perfect for Clegger. Yes, of course. I mean, he already has a sister. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I actually, you know what? Interesting thing. I actually think we all have sisters, right? Nope. Nope. I do. Don't you, Roberto? No, I have two older brothers. 
Oh, okay. I thought you mentioned at one point that you had a sister. No. But I don't. I don't CJ, know. do you have a sister? Um, I I did. Oh. So right. yeah. Yeah. I just, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, don't worry about it. I'm I'm over it now. I've been for a while. Like I mean, occasionally it bothers me and stuff, but I don't know. It's it's something. I mean, it happened five years ago, so it's I think it's five. Yeah, five years ago. Right. So it's it's something I've I've definitely learned to deal with and stuff, and I'm I'm okay talking about it. She was, well, I don't know a nice way to put it. She was a bitch for a while. <laughs> we didn't get along. We fought all the time, but uh, she she got a lot better once she moved away to college, and we actually got pretty close after that. I mean, we we were always pretty close, but. I don't know. She was she was kind of a bitch sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, now that the the sad moment is over, I don't want anybody to feel bad, so don't worry about it. But um, I think I have something good yeah. to chew up the podcast a bit. So since CJ brought this up as his duty pleasure manga last week, I decided to to go through and read it. Something called Kimi uh, wa Midara na Boka na Boku no Jo, or My Dirty Queen. Is that it? In English? Well, it's either My Dirty Queen or You Are Dirty My Queen. It's it's a variety of different names. It's not a good direct translation. Right. And God damn it, CJ, you're a perv. <laughs> 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 oh, it, I'm right. sure it's much cleaner than most of the stuff you do, Dan. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Pot car right, in the right. kettle black. Yeah. So you said the girl was horny. You're the one who fucking asked us to recommend you shit like that. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I just wanted you to take our relationship to a different level. Well, you said the... And also, I think my mic it might have a little bit of a... Not my mic, but my internet connection might have a little bit of a delay. So, hope that doesn't oh, fuck up with the, with the mixing the, the sounds later, but whatever. Uh, you said the girl was horny, but Jesus Christ, like... <laughs> nothing can control her, her lust, dude. <laughs> like... Yeah. The, this chick... Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, I, Dan. I, you're making me seem like a much bigger yeah. pervert than I am. <laughs> that was my objective, bringing this up here. <laughs> well, you know, you enjoyed it. It had a pretty good story and everything, and it's just it's very different than most other stuff. So you right. gotta admit that, at least. It, it was really funny and different, yeah. and, well, I think very creative at one point as well. Yeah. Uh, I got through it in one seating. I think I, I read it pretty quick. There are only... I'm not sure if there are other chapters that I didn't find, but I only got through nine chapters. And it nine. seemed like that was the whole thing, but um, it didn't end. Like, the last chapter that I read had, like, her sister coming to the town to stay with her, and then she, like, her, her sister ends up seeing her do stuff with the main character. She was, she was sucking a stick. Yep. <laughs> And that was it. Yeah, and that, from what I've seen, that was the last thing, and there was nothing on it afterwards. Yeah, that's that's one of the shitty things about it. It's it's to the point now because it technically it ended like four or five chapters ago, right? Where like they they come to an agreement with her dad and all that, but uh, then because it got decently popular and everything, much more than the artist actually anticipated it would, they started coming out with irregular releases like every now and then they'll they'll drop something but it, it takes them a long time typically in between and it's it's been a long time since they've come out with another piece of it yeah so. i think it's been a year actually since yeah. the, the chapter that i've read which makes would, me pretty sad actually yeah yeah because it was actually starting to get like really good with the the plot and everything was getting better and all that and i was genuinely right. interested in the shit that's gonna happen with the sister because this sister, sister like freaked the fuck out right because <laughs> uh because of that and um she was like, "There's like, wh- how are you blackmailing my sister and shit?" And he's like, "What? You you better. Pr- you, how are you gonna prove that you're a man good enough for her?" And like all this other shit. And I'm just, and it's just like, "See you next chapter." And there's no next chapter. It's like, God damn it. Yep. <laughs> like I don't know if they've come out with more and they just haven't translated them yet. But I'm I'm pretty hopeful for some more of that to at least get a little bit of resolution with that part of the plot anyway. Yeah, I do hope for so as well. So did you enjoy it though, Dan? Yeah. It was enjoyable. <laughs> I can say that for yeah. sure. Um, there are, I'm glad you liked it. Like there are some things that are so like there, there. It's so weird at some points that it's it's actually very hilarious. So yeah, like the main the first plot point was that uh, her dad wouldn't let her 
stay with the guy because she was already promised to marry some other dude. And the way she actually convinced her dad to let her stay with the guy. Should I say it? Or, yeah. Okay. Well, basically, she just goes over, like, her whole masturbation routine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Telling her dad. And then, and, and then the dude, uh, and then her dad is like, well, for, I, I, I'm not really good with daughters, but for you to bring up all of this, I think you're probably in love with him, so, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm for, not... for someone to genuinely, to their dad, especially a girl talking about being like, these are the different ways that I masturbate thinking about this guy. I do this and this and this. It's just like, holy shit, that's a lot to just fucking say to your dad. He's just like, well, that's, I'm, I'm pretty sure this isn't normal for you to be talking to me about this. So I'm assuming <laughs> this must be really important to you. Then. <laughs> and, anyway, uh, so yeah, the chick's crazy. Um, yeah. But in a good way. Yeah. Not the, not the type of chick, crazy chicks you normally like, Dan. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, no, she's not crazy. Darn it! I, I I think I can say she's every she's, boy's dream, possibly. Like every every fourteen year old boy dream, at least. And yeah, pretty much. What were you thinking at at fourteen, Dan? <laughs> Apparently, getting laid all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> like just fucking constantly. Like, cause this this girl is so bad to the point where she can't even go like fucking. 20 minutes with the guy in the same room as her without needing to get off somehow. Like, it's that bad. (laughs) I'm sure Clacker wouldn't enjoy this one. (laughs) No, no. I don't think... uh... I think he's lying. I mean, if if you like Nazokiana, you'll probably like it. So that's the next one. (laughs) Wait a minute. Go on, Dan. Go on, I watched, Dan. I watched Nozokiana. I didn't read it. I know I, pro- I was probably supposed to read it. it. You were yeah. supposed to read it. You yes. were oh, yeah, supposed it's, to it's read it. It's much longer when you read it. Because the, the, the anime part's only like, it's like a half it's hour an to an hour, hour special. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an just hour. an OVA. It was cool. I liked it. I was interested to see what would happen next. But there's no next. At least not in anime form. So oh, really? It's supposed to... Read to... It. It's really supposed to just give you a rough idea of what the manga is and everything. Right. It seems like one of those to kind of introduce the characters and how they are. And yeah, it you you should definitely just read it and get back to us because there's there's a fuck ton more that happens than what's in that hour special. Like it doesn't even come close to scratching the plot line, like the oh, surface okay. of the plot line. I I, I, it, actually, I was actually thinking that that was probably half of it or something. Oh no no no, no no no! It scratches it very tiny bit. But then there's, like, this entire love story wrapped inside of it, and you don't see any of it inside the actual, like, anime, or yeah, the honestly, little not, short not, not to say that watching it wasn't enjoyable as well, but, um, it was oh, yeah, really pretty much just, it was really pretty much just sex as well. Like, there wasn't, there wasn't as much of a romance yeah. yet between him. Yeah. Like, there were just a little nods to it, but. I think the the anime takes place roughly a quarter to halfway into the manga, and it's just like a random like two chapters that were a side story out of like the hundred and ten chapters I think there are. Okay. It's somewhere yeah, around there's, there. There's a hundred and ten, I think. Okay, so yeah. it's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that there's... that the anime is pretty much just two of those chapters out of like the hundred and ten. So you got like just a very small sample of what some of the characters are like, and that's it. Right. Okay. Just go read it. You'll like it. Trust me, you'll like it. <laughs> me? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll read it. I promise I'll read it. It may take me a, a while, though, to, to get to it. Since that's that that's, again, that's fine. Yeah. It's scary how probably me and CJ are strangely compatible. Dude, I, I told you. Our, let, actually, let me look on my, my anime list, because it's, like, fucking ridiculous how, how, like, close me and him are. I think it's, like, 89 or 88%. Let me, let me see. While CJ looks at that, just, uh, I know we're already, like, being recording for a while, but, uh, I've also caught, caught up with Durarara. Dur- Should I pronounce this in English? Durarara. Durarara. I would pronounce it Durarara. Go. Oh, it's uh, 81%. CJ, CJ. 81.5%. Yeah. Still, that's, that's really fucking crazy good. Yeah. So, Roberto, you're watching that as well, right? Yep. How do you like it so far? I'm enjoying it. Just waiting I, for whatever the big I plot really point like is going to be. Dude, like... Well, I know there isn't a big plot point yet. It's kind of like the first season, where for the most part you're just like kind of seeing the same events from different characters' perspectives and all that. 
But dude, like I, I can't fucking wait till shit gets real this mm -hmm. season because there's so many new characters and I like all of them. Like they're all so cool. I'm so curious to see what the new kid at school uh, is gonna do. I mean, the one that uh, talked to Masami about, uh, no, not Masami, sorry, Mikado, about the dollars and stuff. You know, the blue-haired yeah. dude. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what what he's up to. Also, the there's the assassin chick that is going out with Shizuo's brother. There's the new guy who just got in town that got kicked by Shizuo, like almost everyone in the show. Um, yeah, <laughs> dude, just like there's so much happening, and also like fucking Kida Masaomi is not even on the, it's not even in the city anymore. You know, like he's been out. They're just been showing him a few times, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna come back at one point as well. Oh yeah, I can see that. In the moment that all those forces clash together again, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, me too. Also, fucking, like, Isaiah's sisters, dude, like, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> they, they now, might who do you be... think are crazier, Aradagi's <laughs> sisters or his sisters? Oh, man, I like, hmm. I, 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 <laughs> I kind of want to see these sisters now. The, the problem is that I have not seen enough of them yet. But I really, really liked what I've seen of them so far. So I bet you did, and, Dan. And I bet that CJ would actually like really like them as well. This this is I a mean, very yeah. interesting no. season. No, oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna look at I'm, I'm gonna watch no. the um the second season whenever they get enough of it built up where I can just like marathon a lot of it. Right. Because I there are very few shows that I like to actually follow week by week because I have a very big problem being like impatient and getting very angry at cliffhangers. So. That's the reason I haven't finished, like, Log Horizon Season 2 yet, like, gotten caught up with that, because they stopped at a very good point at 13 or 14, I think it was, and I just stopped there, and it's like, okay, cool, good arc end, now and we And Dude is actually really crazy with the way the plot progresses, so I think that if, like, I mean, if I don't, I don't know if I would be able to keep up with everything that is happening if I was watching in a weekly basis, because there's just, like, there's not a clear time progression Right, Roberto? So, like, mm, right. one episode, they're, like, ahead, and then on the ac the next episode, they go back and show, like, what happened before that, and then every ep each episode shows the same events sometimes, but from different characters' per uh, like perspectives, and they do a lot of, well, here's an episode focusing on, you know, a lot of Shizuo and Isaiah and whatever, and then on the next episode, well, were you curious about who, like, what his sisters were doing at the same time that he was doing that? Well, this is what they were doing. But, oh, that so, could be pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, it's not straight, like, all the time like that, but they do a lot of jumping around in time and placements, uh, and just being, like, like going from, uh, like, showing the same events from different uh, characters' perspectives from time to time, or just uh, showing a future event and then going back to show what caused it. And that's part of what I really liked about this show in general, and the season, like, the second season is full of that. And I really like it so far. And fucking Samurai Flamenco is in it. That's right. <laughs> what? Oh yep. my god. So uh, they're walking in the uh, middle of Ikebukuro, and on one of the giant television screens in the background, they're just playing Samurai Flamenco. Yes, that's so good. <laughs> and it's just oh, an Easter egg, but it's a pretty good Easter egg. <laughs> nice. A little side note here, Roberto. I was still on my anime list and decided to look at both of you. Apparently, I'm 79.8% matched with you, so we're getting pretty close there. There we go. Dan, still not so much. We'll get to watch Gold Geass. And it's it's we'll like be, 65. We'll you know I'm going to destroy that, right? <laughs> I'm going to be brutal with that shit. We'll see, we'll see. So that's it for what I did this week. A lot of stuff. See, I, I told you guys I, will, I, will, I would be able to catch up to some stuff this week. Yeah, it was good. It was entertaining. I'm glad, I'm glad you checked out my... My recommended one from last week. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. So, uh, Roberto, what have you been watching this week? So, besides what or I've been reading. watching, I've actually been catching up on a manga I had on the back burner for a while, and that's Medaka Box, from the author of Bakemonogatari, Nisi Os Isin. I and did not know that was by the same guy. I, I, also yep. I need to look this up. He wrote the story and someone else drew the art, but ultimately the the manga is about poking fun at Shonen Jump and Shonen Tropes. And the irony is, it was published in Shonen Jump. So throughout the whole thing, they're making fun of the magazine they're being published in. So it's Medaka Box? Medaka Box, yeah. 
That's Madaka cool. Box, okay. I, a lot of people like that one. I actually heard a lot of good things about that. Isn't there an anime as well of this series? Yeah, they did. Super? They covered two of the arcs. But one thing is, you, you kind of have to go into it knowing it's a parody, or else you're going to think it's just another run-of-the-mill shounen that's very oh, okay. generic. But it's really all about poking fun at the genre. And right, right. now, just so you can get an idea of what kind of stuff they do, the arc I'm on right now, they're taking one of the side characters and having him go through main character training because the only one who can beat a main character is a main character. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That actually so sounds good. pretty good. <laughs> so it's just shit like that they do throughout the whole series. Well, I already love like this guy's stuff. Like I've read some of his other stuff that he's done. It's fucking brilliant, so I, I'm going to have to read and watch this because apparently there's 12 se- 12 episodes of anime too yeah there's two se- there's two seasons okay so more okay I'll, I'll have to read and watch that so i'm excited now that's probably what i'm going to talk about next week <laughs> <laughs> anyway what about you clicker anything interesting you've been reading or watching this week not much. Uh, I mainly caught up with a manga called uh, Feng Xing Ji. That sounds That's a like good one. Kung Fu. <laughs> it's a manhua, actually. It's from China. It's it's yeah, it's a manhua. It's not a manga, but it's still it's still a good series, and it's gotten really good lately. I've been really happy with it. Um, it's actually one of the first. Mon was I recommended to Roberto when we first started this. Oh shit. Yep. <laughs> so. And I'll, I have to say, like, pretty much what we expected to happen happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was we well we knew it was going to have to happen because they hinted at it a ton during the God Arc. So it right. had to have been that way. So it's it's interesting. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Um, but I'm mainly caught up with my manga because I've been actually falling behind on that because I've been focusing on anime so much. So I caught up on my One Piece. I caught up on my Fairy Tale. I caught up on my Feng Shang Ji. I caught up on another manhwa called Tower of God. I caught up on um, another manhwa called The Gamer. Hmm. <laughs> All of which are very interesting, and I finally got to catch up with them all. So, it was mainly catch-up week for me. Nice. Just because Klecker said One Piece, I just want to point out that I think Klecker has also brought up One Piece in every episode so far. <laughs> Probably. It's going to happen because it's my favorite series. Still still not the best, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh. let's move on to the... Uh... The next topic here, because I think everybody's pretty much done. Um, sweet, let's talk about our favorite thing we watched or read, or you can do watched and read in 2014 if you want. And like I said, this doesn't have to be something new that came out then, it's just something you read or watched throughout the year. So, yeah, I, I, I'll go ahead, because I'm the host and gives me priority, I guess. <laughs> sure. Anyway. Um, the leader? Yes, because, you know, I'm awesome. But, uh, the... The anime that I enjoyed the most was actually one that was recommended on um, on for from this group and everything from this before we turn it into a podcast when we used to just like text chat over Skype and all that and spend fucking four hours talking about <laughs> stuff because yes. typing in chat is much slower than talking. But um, the the anime that I enjoyed the most last year was uh, Dusk Maiden of Amnesia, which was oh. just fucking awesome. Like, it's, so what it is, it's, um, it, it ends up being a romance one about this guy and a ghost that he meets, and there's just so much, like, good things about it, like, it's, it's, she's, she's a very different character than a lot of the girls I've seen, and there's just into being all this drama and everything was great, and it has the best, the absolute best way of doing, like, a flashback while putting somebody else in your shoes where the main guy at one point ends up actually having because of how he touched her or something I forgot like he ends up having a flashback where he literally could feel everything that she felt and everything from the the day or like week 
following up to when she died and became a ghost where he would literally just he couldn't move or anything he was just essentially part of her body and everything then he saw everything she she saw tasted everything she did and felt everything she did including all the pain like from when she was dying and all that and it was just so impactful with that and the characters are great like you should just go watch it if you haven't it was awesome and um that was really good oh yeah, yeah. so good that was definitely my favorite one of the year that one came out, which I think was 2013. Yeah. So good. Yeah. My... 2014 was a good year for me when it comes to anime and manga, because not only is it the year we started this entire... Like, me and Roberto started this entire thing, but it's also a year I just... I was able to discover a lot more. I was able mm-hmm. to dive deeper into anime. And oh, yeah, I found Log Horizon. I found Bakamonogatari. I found Clanad. I found all this great stuff. So for me to measure it on a scale is really, really difficult. Just, just, just say Bakamonogatari. Yeah, you do know, you know Bakamonogatari <laughs> is your favorite. There's it's only that, one right good. answer. And it is Clanet. Clanet's <laughs> good too, but Bakamon got the knees above See, that. Clanet is a very close second, though. Here it's... is what I have to do. So you're saying Log Horizon doesn't measure up to those two? Oh, CD? God, no. You're it's saying. good. It's very good. You're saying. But oh, no. You're leaving. You're leaving her behind, CJ? Akatsuki is one of my favorite characters, but the anime is not one of my favorite. An- oh, not up to, like, one of my favorite, like, top five animes. Akatsuki is a top five character. But the anime itself, not quite there yet. It may get there by the end of this second season. I don't know. But that anime does not compare to Bakamonogatari or Clan Ad or Shuffle even. Like, yeah. Fair enough. Well, so, each of their own opinion if Clacker does prefer Long Horizon. But but Clicker it's... knows Bakamonogatari. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, let's make sure not to intimidate him so that he actually says uh, like, what he thinks. So... Well, he's going to anyway. Go ahead. Here's here's (laughs) what I'm going to say. If I have to say this, I'm going to say this right. Bakamonogatari is the best emotional... I I wouldn't say emotional. I would say it's the best um, talkative anime I have seen, where I'm excited just to see an episode of talking and interactions between people. Oh, yes. Just like the fucking... Oh, yes, the episode with, uh, it was the first one in the, uh, Meoi Snail one, where it was just, uh, Ajaragi and Senjo Gahara just talking almost the entire episode, and him, Pretty her much. fucking with him, and I think that's the arc they end up dating and all that, and it's just great. Oh, Pretty I much. I'll definitely that. give you guys that. Mo- the Monogatari series is probably the only series where I can go for, like, 30 minutes just reading two uh, like two characters talking to each other and still love it because the dialogue is so well written. I think I, I think Bakemonogatari series, although maybe not being my favorite series of them all, like CJ's, it definitely it has be. my favorite dialogue. I'll put it like that. I think it's the one that has the best written dialogue. Out it's there. it's extremely well written and it's extremely enjoyable just watching the interactions between two characters. So when it comes to interactions between characters, Bakumonogatari was my favorite series of 2014. When it comes to an emotional roller coaster, Clanad takes it by a landslide. When it comes, I'm so sad, man. I've I've cried so many times watching that anime. <laughs> when it comes to general action anime, it was probably Log Horizon. That's how I can separate those. But those were like my top three of 2014. I, and, I'm okay with that. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I have to section them off because for me to say one is better than the other is really hard for me. So I have to say they're all very, very beautiful masterpieces. Oh yeah, everybody own, should watch all of them. Definitely. They're all great. In their own respect. So that's what I'm going to say. That is my good and positive, or my best of 2014. I, I can accept that. You, you're not kicked off the podcast yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet is the key words. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and jump back now in now because I wasn't quite done, Clicker. Oh, um, I did want to say my... Oh, it's fine. <laughs> but I, I did want to say my favorite um, manga that I read last year as well 
which this one, just the name of it threw me off like crazy, and I put it off for over a year of not reading it. And it was, um, for some reason I just picked it up because I saw so many people like, it's fucking amazing, just read it, uh, was Molester Man. Now, before yeah. you guys freak out and everything <laughs> over the name, calm down. The reason it's called Molester Man is because it's actually based on a true story where all of the characters were just given names that sort of embody either how they were introduced into the story or, like, what they are. And what ended up happening in the very beginning here is the main guy, who is Molester Man, was mistaken for someone who was stalking the main girl, and she thought he was going to, like, molest her or whatever, rape her or something like that. And he wasn't. Like, they end up going to the... They end up going to the police station, and they explain everything, and it takes a few chapters for them to finally get through with most of that. And, um, like, she ends up kind of understanding and forgiving him and everything, which hints her name, which is misunderstanding. Not, like, misunderstanding, but Mrs. Understanding. Where she kind of is like, okay, so you weren't trying to do that, that's good, and all that. <laughs> and it ends up being a just really good story and everything after that. And, um... Yeah, one thing that'll probably get you to read it, Dan, is one of the characters, her her thing that she's called is Lolly Jugs. So Probably get me to read it. What what do you yeah. mean by that, CJ? <laughs> because her name is talking about boobs, and okay. I know you, Dan. Alright. So you know me. Okay. Anyway, it, it is actually, in my opinion, a, a better story than Nazokiana or any of that. Like it's it's great. So you should you should all read that too. Anyway, now I'm done, so we can we can let somebody else take over here. Who wants to go next? I'll go. Cool. So it's it's kind of a hard pick as well for me. That I just watched a lot of really good stuff in 2014, but I think I might have to give it to Ping Pong the animation, just because simply there was so much character development and so much depth to these characters, and it wasn't yeah. your very traditional story of the fall and the rise of the main character. Everyone seemed to take different paths in life and taught a lot of harsh lessons, but you kind of understood in the end. Well, yeah, in the end, you get the the camaraderie is better than everything anyway with the, the main guy and his, I guess, what would he be? He's not his rival, his best friend-ish yeah. rival thing. And them ended up just like fucking having a blast at the end there. It's great. So Yeah, that, that one was really good. Yeah. And For those of you who don't know, that was the... Uh, I think that was the last anime we watched right before we started this. So, unfortunately, you missed all that conversation. That's right. And then right. for my favorite manga of 2014, I think Same. I have to give it to Good Ending. Which I'm is not read it yet. Does it have a good ending? For me, it was a good ending. <laughs> okay. So, it's from the same author as Domestic Na Kanojo. And the story revolves around this guy who's in love with his his senpai from the tennis club and he gets caught like peeping on her while she's playing tennis from one of the other girls in the tennis club so she kind of gives him an ultimatum that either he joins and works his way to confessing to her or she's going to tell people that he's a peeper hmm. so he does end up joining and trying to do his best and at the same time he kind of builds a relationship with the girl who who's helping him essentially overall it's a, it's a pretty good love story a lot of different twists here and there I'm sad, Roberto. I'm very sad. I know what you... I will admit that was a close second, but that one really, really took me away. Okay. I'll, I'll take it from here, then. As, as long as Roberto's done, of course. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, well, actually, I'm kind of curious what the what the one that Clacker's talking about is there. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Uh, Such a great series! I'm, I'm about five chapters into that right now. There you go. It's gonna get better. That's all I have to say. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Dan. So it actually is kind of a weird, uh, like a hard pick for me as well, but for the opposite reason, I didn't really watch like a lot of anime before we started doing this, which was in like, I think I joined in like June or something. Um, actually, probably even later. I think I might have joined like August or something. I, I don't, I don't quite remember when we started. And before that, I kind of watched like nothing, like almost nothing. Just a few shows, like a few second seasons of shows that I that I have watched before. So I didn't really have like a lot of masterpieces that I that I went through last year, in my opinion. 
But I, I guess the one that stood out uh, the most to me, looking at the things that I finished watching in 2014, would have to be Mirai Nikki, which we did watch uh, together. Which the story, as you guys know, but obviously the the listeners possibly don't, is of twelve characters who each receive a different future diary, and that's actually what the name of the the show means. And each diary is comes in possibly a different form and describes the future in a different way. So you got the the protagonist of the show has a diary that describes everything that would happen around him in the future. While the the female protagonist, who is one of my favorite uh, characters ever, just because of how like crazy and complex her personality was, oh, yeah, she, she was good. Yeah, she stalked him for a long time, and then she got the diary that told her everything about him. And then basically, their hate um, Basically, their objective was to like they had to kill each of the other diary owners in order to become God, who is the who actually architected the whole uh, plan in the whole game. And there's also just like a lot of interesting uh, twists and a lot of cool and unique characters that I really enjoyed seeing. And uh, it was yeah. just a very like fun ride, in my opinion. I, yeah, G- Gasai, you know, is, she, she's the guy he was talking about there, and she is by far one of the most interesting like characters I've ever seen. And she is what a lot of people will tell you is just the quintessential Yandere, which is... Like, fucking just the bitch so madly in love, she is literally mad and crazy. Like, it's... Oh. Yep. I fucking love her, and I absolutely uh, recommend this anime. I think Clacker has been meaning to say something for a while. Go ahead, Clacker. <laughs> I really like her. That's all. She's she's the best. That's that's she all. She is not the best. No. She is... Not even she close. is the... <sighs> okay, she's not the best... But Akatsuki and Sinjoga are better. And Shinobu. <laughs> Shinobu is is really good. Yeah. Shinobu's that... Shinobu's really good. Kaiki's the best. <laughs> Kaiki is the best. <laughs> then... Who are we all kidding? Kaiki's uh, the best. Seriously though, I think Hanekawa is probably my best girl from from back and forth. Same. Yeah. Same. I, I, you I guys and your smart keep, like, girls. You no, know, the thing about Hanekawa is that they just keep building up. On her character. And like, after every arc, like, I think she had fucking three arcs already. And at the end of each one, I just had a, like, a completely different vision of who the, that character was than I had in the beginning. And just the fact that she kept, like, getting more complex while never really losing the, the core personality uh, was really interesting to me. And I, I, I just really like her. But anyway, back to my favorite, like, anime <laughs> in my um, That was my favorite anime series. My favorite anime movie, which I want to bring up as well, because this was actually oh. probably the favorite, like the best thing that I watched slash read last year. And to me, it was Okami Kodomo no Ameto Yuki or Wolf Children. Which, yes. Oh, so good. I forgot about that. Yes. Oh, which the great would have been Roberto one of here recommended us to watch. And I absolutely loved it. And yeah. I, 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 I haven't watched like a lot of anime movies and. Roberto was recommending a bunch last year, and that, 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 that's kind of what got me through some of those. And I, I, for the most part, I just felt like in, in movies, there wasn't enough time to develop like everything that I'm interested on in seeing on an anime show. But and The dude, wolf children shatters that perception. Exactly, dude. Like, man. Like, the like, character growth and everything is so good in that. Oh, my God. They, they, they're able to pack, like so much into like this core group of characters that it's unbelievable that it's it's just like a two hour movie but it's basically just the story of uh in summary it's the story of a girl who marries a wolf or should i say a werewolf a lycus yeah um and she gets pregnant and she has two kids and eventually he well should i spoil this well eventually something happens and the story is basically about the mom raising the the wolf kids and just the way that they they grow uh, as people throughout the the movie. And it's really really good. My favorite scene is still the food now, food now. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like, yeah. so good. <laughs> uh, that was I need really to good. watch that again. That's and what I actually actually ended up picking that up at Black Friday for like 10 bucks for the Blu-ray DVD combo pack at Best Buy. Oh yeah, that's one that I, I'm definitely gonna buy as soon as I 
go there to the United States. <laughs> Spoilers. Yep. Uh, actually, when I visit you guys, we should probably try to record a podcast like when we're actually all in the same place. That that would involve these two coming to Orlando as well. Which I mean, we'll we'll well, they probably if, come anyway, right? Yeah. If we're we do plan a MegaCon, we can probably do that. That's true. We could do like a live version. I I just then, realized I told everybody where we live. It's all <laughs> creepy now. Yeah, yeah. no yeah, one knows where I live. Out. And then <laughs> I, I can actually beep it out if you want. <laughs> no, nah, don't worry. I, about I, I, it. Uh, Orlando's big. And we can have you know special guests and invite you know voice actors from our favorite anime shows and stuff. It'll oh be yeah, because awesome. they're gonna come to our fucking podcast. <laughs> right? It has like Wait, maybe five I? listeners. Yeah. And we can did have I ever the fans talk come to you guys around. about that? We'll figure it out later. I guess I didn't talk to you guys about that. Anyways, whatever. About what? You already brought it up, Clucker. Having having guests on the show, like guests that we know have seen the series and have their own input. So, for example, if we ever watch a Gundam series ever in our entire podcast, I I I I know Seth would love to join us and say a whole bunch of stuff about it so it's just having guests that we know come on to the show and expressing their opinions and that's just something i i is a thought i had and i don't know if we want to do it but it's something that i can clearly see right. us doing yeah well it's like i said like one of my one of my coworkers. i think i already talked to her a little bit about it she'd be fine coming on and everything and she she knows plenty about anime so Right. If we were doing, like, Samurai Fominko or something, or actually she would have been great with, like, JoJo's here, too, but it's kind of a little bit late for that. Yeah. But um, It's never too late, CJ. It's never too late. So do, do you want me to just call her be like, hey, I need you to be on <laughs> Skype right now. I'm doing a podcast. You need to join. I mean, I, I absolutely think we should get, like, more guests in the show and stuff, but maybe we should just wait a little bit longer. We should get, yeah. like, the podcast format, like, fleshed out, and just you get a little better at it before we just... Like put a fifth person in. Because we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we're well, completely. Another, we find another thing people. we could. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. One at a time. I'll, okay. I'll go ahead and go first. Is um one thing we can always do as well is if we know somebody's either going to be absent or just not be able to make it or they're fine just stepping out for a week if they need a break or something, we could always do it then. Like sure. that ends up being a a better time. We obviously we just need to know a little bit ahead of time. Yeah, so, I agree. Understandable. I was just gonna say that with five people, it actually um, like having a fifth person in podcast. It means like someone else, like that is talking, and then maybe other people. Whatever. I, I, I was just gonna it's say it's like that, what just happened with three people right there, all of us talking all over each other. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it just becomes even harder to just get yeah. each person get their part and everything. But. Mm-hmm. That's true. But, I mean, to be honest, that is the first time that's happened to us, because usually we all just sit here and wait for someone else to talk. Well, I mean, it's good we're actually all getting to the point where we want to talk more, which is good. Obviously, we're going to run into issues like that, where it's like, oh, God, everybody's trying to talk, but (laughs) at least we're not sitting here silent. (laughs) Because I'm sure that makes for a good podcast. It's it's better to have the problem of stepping on each other's toes a little bit than to have yeah. the problem of not being able to talk. Yeah, this yeah, podcast actually had a, lo- a lot less uh, silent moments than the last one, so I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about that after. I think we're pretty much done here, unless anybody else has any comments or anything. Nope. I'm excited to see what you guys think of next week, because next week... I'm going to have a lot of questions for you two. Oh, God, I am so pumped for this shit. You have no it's, idea. It's going to be good. Like, if I didn't uh, have to work tomorrow, I would probably marathon more of it. But I know <laughs> if I start, it's like, okay, three episodes only. No, I'm going to like fucking 2 a.m. So I, <laughs> I need to work tomorrow. Trust me, CJ. I was the exact same way when I yeah. started this series. Oh. Like, the second I got into the second arc, I couldn't stop. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I literally finished it, like, two weeks before I was supposed to, and I was like, hey, Roberto, I'm done, and he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, it was really good. And anyway, there, there's one more thing I, I forgot. I, I think I put this in the in the chat at one point, but it's it's happening. I I received my copy of the School Days game. 
Oh yeah, you said that. I thought you were going to talk about it. I'm, I'm going to play this. Into madness. Oh yes. If you go crazy, CJ, I'm not going to be there for you. I, I don't know what to expect. I'm kind of scared. But um, I, I haven't actually played any of it yet. I'm I haven't installed, and I I just like prepared it and everything. But um, yeah, I'm a little bit scared to watch it or play it. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know if it's gonna like destroy me emotionally or what. But, it will um, probably destroy you emotionally and apparently, physically. Apparently, there's more good endings than there are bad endings, though. So, cool. that's that a plus. Okay. doesn't mean you're going to get the bad ending first, and your heart will die. <laughs> so, I guess or next some week very, we're not very just bad. an anime manga podcast, but also a like, visual novel podcast as well. <laughs> it's what a fucking anime is based off of, Dan. Right, that's no, why I, I felt like bringing it up. <laughs> I, I, I'm joking. Yeah, I know. You know, Clannad was based off of a visual novel, and I, that yeah. we all see how see how that series turned and out. Actually, I'm waiting I'm, for my visual novel. Yeah, I'll, oh yeah, I'm, I'm waiting that for that. One. Is that available in English? Not yet. They're translating. It's going to be. Not, not it, legally, they got right? plenty <laughs> of funding. Well, I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, with that, I'm I'm very excited because I want to play the. I think it's Tomio is her name. Mm-hmm. Yep. Me yes. too. I want her arc so bad. Nagus is great. Yes, I like her. Fuck Kyo because I hate Kyo. But Tomio, yes, Why yes, do you hate I want Kyo? that. Arc. She's a bitch. She's an elementary <laughs> school teacher. How can you hate the elementary school teacher? She's a bitch. Teacher? Don't spoil the ending, Clecker. <sighs> Jesus, that's not an ending. Yes, it's why can't take you places? That is the quintessential part of the show that everybody like. That's why everybody cries. I don't know. Kill's a bitch though. Kill's not a bitch. She's yeah, a she perfectly is. good person that just likes to. Kick and throw things at a high velocity. She's a bitch. Tell me uh, does the... similar things, but she's a much better character. I like her a lot better. Fuck her. She's more level headed. Dude, you can't crazy. you can't tell me that one episode of her arc and everything, her just like crying and being like because she had to wait for him and all that. You can't tell me you that didn't and destroy your, your heart. You and your like Cinderas like. Come, calm down, CJ. Well, I think Kyo she's is not Tsundere Tsundere. as well. Yeah, Kyo is more of a Tsundere than Tomoyo, in my opinion. Yeah, there, there are not. different types of Tsundere's. It's true. And there they, they kind types. of embody the two different, like, main types. Where one's just a bitch, even though she likes him, and the other is just has trouble showing her emotions and shit. Which, I mean, they kind of both... It's it's weird. I don't want to go into that discussion, because I've actually read a lot about the different Dede types, including Gang Dede, Soon Dede, and the different types of Soon Dede's, and that's that's another time. <laughs> we we are running short on time, yeah. so we must yeah. go. Yeah, we, we don't want Dan getting too mad, because we make, like, a two-hour podcast, so... Yep. Anyway, I think that's it, so... Thanks, everybody, for listening and all that. Um, I am CJ, also known as Boom Coffee, through all the interwebs and all that. So pretty much any time you see Boom Coffee somewhere, like my anime list or Twitter or whatever, that's going to be me. And, um, yeah, everybody else can tell you where to find him. Go ahead, Dan. Hopefully you don't fuck it up too much to Seth. No, <laughs> no I'm just at Lima Daniel M on Twitter. Just follow me there, and you'll see everything that I'm doing. Cool. And you, Roberto? RJR2992. And Clicker. Aaron Clicker. You can find me on Twitter on OClicker, or you can just find me on f- find me anywhere else. Just find me. That's all you have to do. It's That's kind of okay. You can just look through our stuff and find them. Yeah. yeah. Just to remind people, OClicker is not actually Clicker talking. At least not directly. Well, it is him, but he. It might as well be <laughs> yeah. just yeah. It's me giving the best advice I could possibly give to human beings. That is what it is. Anyway. Anyways. Thanks, everybody, for listening and all that. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, hopefully have you listen in next week if this wasn't... If, if you enjoyed this, which I'm, I'm sure you did. So, yeah. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. See ya.